on guys it is your boy Sesso here bringing us a video here today bringing guys a photoshop illustrator after effects tutorial here today on that creature on very cool starting soon a little animated um probably like it's gonna be like a ui element circle kind of um uh, yeah, video title you know you guys you click the video you guys know what i'm doing um but hopefully <clears throat> In the beginning of the video that I actually did a cool little sort of uh, starting soon, uh, this is a reminder for myself, really, um, a, a little cool little starting soon video screen, you can see kind of how it basically worked out for you guys by the end of the video. So what I'm going to be doing is starting off inside Illustrator, showing you guys how to make these really cool circle elements. Um, for the record, by the way, like I know my voice is shot, no worries though, I'm like a good 90, 95% good, like I'm like no longer that sick anymore, but it's just the voice after like all the coughing, bro, we're, 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 we're screwed. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is right here, this is going to be basically be used uh, uh to use it to create this we're just gonna be using the stroke option inside of illustrator i'm using also the dotted line feature with that you get a whole bunch of different things and options and little creative fun little tricks you can do to get like this right here was also done through the same thing that this was also done same thing that this was also done so with that being said very very easy very fun so hopefully guys you guys enjoy this and uh yeah two likes on the video because a secret down below which i'm thinking i do maybe like an illustrator pack of like these um that way people could like kind of give them a couple shots i don't know but maybe i also might just do like a like a free kind of um how do you say like an ending i mean uh starting soon sort of like a little circle like it's in the beginning of the video basically i might do that as like a little little fun pack because i know people come over to these uh videos as well because they're looking for also free access so that being said hope you guys enjoyed today's video you gotta bear my voice but i'm also like i said i'm high energy like i'm good i'm chilling it's just like the the voice we're shot but anyway hope you guys enjoy and uh, let's get this thing going yeah let's do it all right, guys, let's go get this thing going. We're going to start off with the UI element. So I'm going to basically do is I'm going to start off by using the ellipse tool. And that should be, what is it, L on your keyboard? Yeah, it is L for the shortcut on your keyboard. And it's also located right over here, right? So I also put this on the left-hand side so we can use that for reference. Um, I'm basically going to start off with this very simple stroke line here. So literally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of find the middle. If you guys didn't know, if you have your smart guidelines on, what I mean is if you have your windows or is it view. And then smart guidelines, so control U on your keyboard is the shortcut for it. You'll be able to see if you kind of hover around, you see the word that says intersect here. That's actually the center. So I'm going to use I'm going to click there, hold Alt and Shift, and this will basically do for me. Well, it'll be a perfect circle, right? That's what you kind of want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply click on this shape right here. We're not going to want fill on, so this first uh, square, like usually but your foreground and your background color. So your foreground color is actually your fill color. Your background color is actually your stroke. And so this, in this case, we're going to turn off the actual fill, turn that off, and we're going to turn on a stroke. Right, and we're just I'm gonna use a gradient because I want to use this orange gradient for this. Um, if you want to choose whatever color you want to choose, just double click on it and choose your color. You know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now go to my uh, stroke tab. So if you want to go to Windows Stroke, if you don't have it up, uh, right around here, and I'm gonna use I'm gonna put my weight up, right, and I'm also gonna put my line stroke to the inside. Now, if you want, I'm, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about the rounded and or join. Um, caps unless you guys end up using not circles you can use different things you guys know that right you can use other shapes you can use like a rectangle um let's just say if you want to use like a like a polygon actually is a pretty good uh asset for this because if you want to do if you just click just like so and say hey i want six sides you get six sides you know what i mean if you want like 10 or 14 whoever the hell you know what i mean whatever how many you want you can do that so if you wanted to do something like that as well you could also do this and that way for what's going on in the beginning of the video it won't be spinning circles it might be spinning like polygons you know what i mean so you can have that kind of be rotating, I was trying to rotate it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it'll be that rotating. Well, that should be pretty cool too. So it doesn't have to be just circles. So there's more than just, you know, having it just be circles as your UI elements. So just be wary of that. I'm gonna click back on this path here though with the uh, direct selection tool and I can go back to my path. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hold shift which like I said, will actually turn your weight up by 10 intervals, not just by one. So if I just not click, you'll see it's 20, now it's 30, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanna have it a pretty good size. I'm gonna say about 50 for this first one here. And that's gonna be that line right here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna probably do the outside ring really quick. So what I ended up doing is simply was just taking this uh, ellipse tool that's under your layers, holding Alt, and throwing in, uh, you can see the little grab option, you'll see a little plus button, which means it's basically making a duplicate. And if you let go, as you'll see, you have actually two strokes now, right? So what I'm gonna do for this one is simply hold Alt and Shift again, that make sure I keep it centered, and then I'm gonna just bring it out a little bit. <laughs> so this is where we introduce the dotted lines. So I'm gonna throw this on just like so, and now I already kind of have uh, some options set so I don't forget, at least for this option here. These other ones here we're gonna have to play around with a little bit, but also kind of give you guys a hint of how to kind of work it around, right? So this right here, I have my gap at 10 for this one and then 20 for this one. If I didn't have this on 20, this would just be a little bit more 
Uh, if I please let it, there we go. It'll be a little bit more like close together and I'm not looking for something like that. I mean, that doesn't look bad at all, but I, I just thought the gaps kind of fit a little bit better. I don't know, honestly for this one here, I might go, I might go, oops, I might go with no gaps this time. So no secondary gap here. I, we'll just give it a shot, why the hell not, you know what I mean? And if you wanna make your stroke a little bit bigger, you can also still do that, right? I'm just gonna kind of make this a little more bigger. We're changing it up a little bit and I kind of still like it though. And then I'm gonna say right about there. All right. This issue here, though, if you find out with this, uh, this little issue where you kind of get these double lines here, you can say you don't really care about it because honestly, when you go when it's going in an actual uh, a circle, you might not actually even see it. Well, you might see it, of course, you do a full rotation, but it's not going to be, I think, too noticeable. But it's it's probably going to annoy the hell out of some of you guys. But if you wanted to, if you move your dash option about one down or one up, so simply with your arrow key, just simply press up or down on this dash right here, and you'll see if you press enter, it'll then add. I mean, kind of like maybe it, it might get rid of it, and it, which means it's kind of kind of hide in between. You know what I mean? So that looks pretty good there. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another. Uh, click on this ellipse here, uh, drag it above everything, and then shrink it down a little bit. And this is gonna be our third circle. So for this one here, dotted lines again. Now for this one, I believe this is just a very high cap for this first gap. So something like this. Okay, so you can see as as 50 kind of looks like one of those kind of little cool little clockwork ticks. Um, which I think is really nice, honestly, but I believe if I do like 50 and then like, let's see what happens if we go up. Okay, not so much. What if it was like this? All right, so this one just has to go up quite a bit. As you can see, I'm holding shift, by the way, I'm using my scroll wheel. And as you can see, it goes up by about 10 intervals, just like so if you were holding shift and using your clicks for your stroke. So that's pretty cool just to know. And I think it was like, oh, I think it was actually no BS. It was like 420. 220 something around there and actually i think that's the exact one as you can see right just about at least um and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just lower my stroke path and i think for this for the little ui elements kind of thing i would kind of say kind of just mess around with your stroke paths have them all be different sizes and widths because it's just gonna make a of a it's gonna come up with a better um I guess you would say a, a better scheme or a better look, a better complexity to it. So what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna make sure I wanna change this color to this nice little gray. Um, oopsie, let's go ahead and let's just go into here and just see what it is. Oh, I think it's turned off. That's not the issue, is it though? That it's not letting me click? No, it's because this right here is a fill. So I was trying to take a color off of a fill object, which it is not. And it's gonna end up, you know, of course, making this into a fill object and we actually have strokes on. So that's why that happened. Little mistake, I just wanted to get this little color right here. And I wanna get this hex code because I wanna be able to use it for the uh, the actual one as well. So this one is hex code 8EADD4. So I'm gonna go over here, go over here, make this into a, a uh, gradient. Put that first one in there. And then for the second one on the left hand side, it is hex code, oops, uh, 77 add four. So we're gonna do that. Click back over here, go back to the stroke, go back to your gradient, go back to over here. It's very like particular and make sure you're also clicking on the object that you wanna change the color of because Illustrator is very specific. So if you're not giving it a direction, it's gonna be lost. Um, so there's that. And then this one I believe as well was this color here. Uh, oh, so also when you change the color, if you kind of, I was going to say, I was going to change it because I was going to suggest the fact that they're both strokes, that they'll actually change the, they'll change the color of the strokes. It does, but also takes the actual settings of the stroke as well. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to do it again, just like so. Um, I could also wait until I want to put it as a fill, but I'm just being, I don't know, just being a little bit weird, <laughs> I guess you would say. I'm going to go here, go here. I just want to get the done, or to, I want to get the look, just because it looks a little bit weird to me when it's just all orange so that's what i'm doing um okay please just like that and then there we go okay cool um that one's orange okay anyways doesn't matter <laughs> when you when you notice whoops um anyway so this one here i'm gonna make another duplicate of this one um i'll just do it yeah i'm actually gonna make another duplicate of this actual circle right here not the original right here um, because I want to start off with these settings here because I'm also going to put a third gap and that's going to give me this look right here. So I'm going to go over here, Alt, drag above, and then hold control, Alt, shift, just like so. The reason I hold the control is so I can bring up the, uh, the free transform tools. So now I'm going to go to stroke. We're going to go to dash here. I believe it was about 20 or something like that. I'm going to use my scroll wheel while holding shift to go up by 10 intervals and kind of try to find where we can get like a dot, dot, dot or dot slash slash dot feel. So let's see if we lower this one a little bit more. 
hopefully you guys can actually see what's kind of happening inside the circle if you guys look at the color let's lower this one now too um this one there we go pretty much pretty much there let's put this back at 40. So when you change your colors, as you can see, or when you change your dash numbers, it ends up sometimes going back and reverting it because you didn't actually confirm it. So make sure you guys press enter. So there we go. We got that uh, uh, dot dash dash feel to it. So that's that first one, the inner one right here. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I should, I just realized I could probably just use a color swatch. and I just didn't end up doing that, uh, but it's fine. Anyway, I'll just leave it for now. I'll choose the colors later. But that's basically how you be, uh, how you create these little fun little assets here. Um, so if you if I was you, right, and if you're doing it for your own self and whatnot, copy it. That's perfectly fine as well. Whatever. Uh, I'm just saying you can easily find a lot of fun different things to do. So I just want to do it one more time. You can go into uh, an immense amount of detail, honestly. And I want to also take this one here. I want to make this a little bit bigger than this one. So I'm going to take this. Since we changed it up a little bit, let's make sure we change up the weight for this right do something like that right and they'll make this one here like maybe like 10 it's kind of wow but yeah i kind of like it so this one here if i was gonna just kind of play around with i'd be like hey what happens if i put 10 here if i put you know 190 here you know what i mean you get this weird looks to it you put more dashes right you put more dashes if you want to even more go back in and kind of mess around with different numbers you guys will find some really really cool things that just comes up you know what i mean so Highly recommend you guys to change around and move, move around things. But uh, yeah, that's basically how you create those little UI assets. Really quickly, I just kind of guess, I guess I'll just show you guys right now, actually. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to be taking um, a PSD. So the reason why I have these PSDs number one, two, and three, because from the inside to the outside, this is number one, number two, number three, number four. So the reason why I named them as so is because when I actually take the PSD and throw it into After Effects, I want to be to make sure I know what names they are. But I also wanted to make sure they were singular um, individual um, layers as you can see right so that way it's very very easy to keep track of and also move one at a time so I want to say hey I want to move number four only and move it in a circle then it's able to do that right so the way I ended up doing that was get rid of that for a second and also the background hex code by the way is uh, 0309112 and I ended up putting a nice little simple glow so I used a white brush clicked in the middle put it from normal to overlay and I gave myself a nice little glow to it um, so that's what I ended up doing for the background, just so you guys know. But what I ended up doing for the, uh, please move, thanks. Doing here is I'll just, move, I'll just, I'll change the colors in a little bit. I'll just use a different, I'll use my original PSD, um, just for the sake of it. But anyway, I, all I would have to do is when you have your direct selection tool selected, you select each uh, individual stroke. So I'm going to throw this one inside first, right? You throw that inside first. You can name this one and then you throw in the second layer here. Right, and then you can name this number two. And before you name it number two, make sure you press uh, Control T to free transform. Hold Alt and Shift on a corner and make it a little bit more bigger. Exactly, kind of like how you would suggest um, your when you made it inside Illustrator. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna just kind of like put this here for reference as well. Right, so the starting scene is right there. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna go to Illustrator here, go to the third option here, drag it in the Photoshop just like so, drag and drop. And then I'm not gonna press enter, I'm just gonna leave it as the free transform option still there before I uh, confirm the placement. Hold Alt, hold Shift, keeps it in the middle, and just make it a little more bigger. And then last but not least is this one right here. And we take this here, drag it inside Photoshop, and uh, this misplaced, because I moved it. This is number two, number three, and number four. So number four is one we didn't move, Control T, Bra bring this up just like so. And then this is what you guys would want to save. So now, if you want to save the text as well, you could do that. But you can also do the text inside After Effects. It's not that big of a problem. But this is what you want to basically have set up before you move into After Effects. Makes it 10 times easier for you guys. So that way, you know, when you have it named, you can just say, hey, I want to move this number number one. And then et cetera, et cetera, uh, et cetera. So if you, all, if you guys want to as well, I can also, the reason why I didn't really care too much about this not being uh, orange is because I can just simply change it to orange inside After Effects as well. Uh, excuse me, Photoshop as well. And it won't be a problem. So once you just do this, you want to go to save, save as, of course, right? And then you just want to simply save this as, you know, start. I started, I see that as starting circles. So this is what you want to have. So what I'm going to do is the next clip. You guys just see me in After Effects. And I'm going to open this up in After Effects and then get the very simple kind of like very simple, cool little fun um, spinny things going. It's very, very easy just using the rotation tool and uh, really quickly, simply easy ease elements. So let's hop into After Effects and finish this uh, video off for you guys. And uh, yeah, thanks for just watching this part at least. 
All right, guys, so we're hopped inside of After Effects. So I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, file. We're going to go to import and we're going to import our file, uh, the PSD that I was talking about. So I named it, as you can see on my desktop. I'm not going to show my desktop, but it just says I'm choosing. Uh, it doesn't actually matter whatsoever. Um, starting, starting circle, excuse me. What I'm going to do is just take that file right there, press import. When the options table and the the the, the, the uh, window comes up, sorry. Uh, make sure you guys have editable layer styles selected, not merge layer style. So you make sure you have this one selected, the blue circle selection, and then go to import kind and make sure you don't have footage, not composition, but composition retain layer sizes. So press OK. And once you have done that, you just double click on this just like so, and then it'll take the exact composition of what you had in Photoshop. So if you were in a 1920, which I also probably should have suggested for you guys, is when you actually throw in stuff inside your document size, uh, make sure you guys are using file new, um, saved, make sure you guys are using 1920 by 1080 and 300 resolution is just what I end up using. Um, 72 is perfectly fine, by the way. Uh, After Effects. So now, as you can see, all the uh, layers are numbered just like so. And then here comes the very simple, fun, and cool part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on number one. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna press uh, on, the, on the actual layer, press R on your keyboard, and it brings up the rotation table and settings, as you can see. So if you guys know how to uh, keyframes work, by the way, I'm in a composition setting of 21 seconds. I'm just gonna make it 20 seconds flat, uh, just like this, and then two zero zero. Okay, as you can see, the composition size of the actual um, timeline itself is now in seconds, of course, still, but it's in just only a flat 20 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 10 seconds as a halfway point, of course, and then 20 seconds as a full on rotation. So what I'm going to do for this number one right here is in the beginning of the timeline, you click on this little stopwatch here, and that's how you start off your keyframes. The keyframe is going to allow you guys to move around the rotations. As you can see, if you look on the preview right here, if I move this around, this right here, Whatever ends up, end up numbers you end up moving throughout the timeline, it would actually change those from one uh, one position to another time, um, one time to from another time. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? You guys know what keyframes are for sure. You probably definitely know. Um, ten seconds. I'm gonna go on to the ten second uh, keyframe, just like so. And what I end up doing is I'm gonna just click another keyframe, just like so, right? So that's gonna say like basically in a way. If you guys really don't know what, you're, what I'm doing, you see how this is moving around. I'm gonna move it to a random number for now. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. It'll go from zero, which uh, automatically should be at default. And then when you go through, you're gonna say, hey, you're gonna see all this movement. So depending on how fast you guys want it, it depends on how many rotations are gonna be happening. So I'm personally only gonna do one rotation because I want it to be uh, fairly slow. Now on this 10 second keyframe here, make sure I'm on the 10 second keyframe, I am. I'm using this little uh, bar down here to zoom in and make sure I'm actually selected on the right spot. Because also if you, if you weren't, it will make a keyframe if you are one frame off and whatnot. You're gonna be like, why the, what the hell happened? You know, why is it wrong? Um, I'm gonna put this back on zero. The number before the uh, zero, not zero, you'll see the zero X, uh, you know, zero dot zero. So this first zero right here is actually how many rotations are happening. So in my case, I want one rotation to happen uh, from zero seconds to 10 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put the number one here, just like so. And if I go over here, you'll see that it's only gonna basically rotate one full rotation, a full 360 degrees, and that's exactly what I personally want. And it's also very easy to keep track of and make sure that your looping system is very, very easy because you wanna always make sure whatever you started off with is exactly what you're ending with. That way, you know, if you make your, if you end up making your uh, video for your starting soon uh, screen in uh, OBS 10 seconds, right? You want it to make sure that it doesn't have a weird jump or a cut to a different, you know, position before you start over again. Because if you start off with something, and if you end with something, when you start off with that same thing, it's going to look like the same thing. It's just going to be keep on looping. So make sure you guys have a perfect loop going. So that's why we're using perfect rotations. So. As you see, 0 to 10 seconds is one full rotation. So I'm going to go to 20 seconds now, all the way at the end of the keyframe, as you can see, right? Uh, I'm not actually on it, but right. Oh, I, I was. That's fine. That's probably fine. Uh, oops. Excuse me. Here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just type this in um, the first on the first uh, number again. I'm going to put a 2. You might be saying to yourself, we're going to go with 0, right? And no. Let me show you what happens if you go to 0. If you go to 0 thinking, hey, I'm going to start off with what I end off with, um, yes. But not quite literally with numbers because this is a full rotation. So if you're going from zero, as you can see, you can see how this is going clockwise, right? And when we get to that 10 second mark where it changes, it's not gonna go counterclockwise if you put it to zero because that's saying, hey, we need to go back uh, to another full rotation but the opposite way. So as you guys probably guessed it, this should not be zero, this should be two. So this way it goes, hey, 
one full rotation as in clockwise and also another full rotation in clockwise so that's how i'm going to basically be doing it so i'm going to also switch it up a little bit and i'm going to make this orange uh one here number two i'm going to make this one just do a full rotation i'm going to press r on the keyboard by the way to bring out the rotation also when you're done with your keyframes, if you want to press uh, U on your keyboard to hide and unhide them, that's kind of how you do it. So I would definitely suggest that for sure. Um, prior, before I actually move on to the number two really quickly, let me easy ease these keyframes here. Now what easy ease does, as you can kind of see, if you look at this right now, it's very, very stagnant and just very like, it's consistent in a way, but it's also just very, I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's really just stagnant. There's no... You don't see any motion or different uh, changes of speed, which might actually occur in a UI element kind of fun thing. This is perfectly fine, by the way, but let me show you guys something that looks pretty cool in my eyes. If you highlight these keyframes right here by just selecting on the actual graph, highlighting all three, as you can see, right click on them, go to keyframe assistance, and then go to easy ease. And then what happens here is they all turn into this little hourglass figure. This is gonna be a cool little kind of uh, trick really quick, right? Not really a trick. Every basically, if you guys know motion design, and if you guys wanted to learn motion design, you're gonna be probably using a lot of keyframes, obviously, but also most likely gonna be using a lot of easy eases as well. So once you have those easy eased keyframes selected, you wanna go to your graph editor and click on it. And now your graph editor should look something like this. If it does not, make sure you guys go to, right, make sure you right click and choose edit speed graph. Your, mo your I think it default is on edit value graph. If yours looks like something like this where numbers on the side like that, make sure you guys are going with speed graph. It should be very uh, close to something like this, where it's on a flat line right here, all of your keyframes. And there's also these little yellow uh, little handles that actually happen when you click on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select uh, this right here. This first little handle, as you can see, is actually this uh, keyframe right here. And the second handle right here is actually this keyframe right here. So just think about it like that. It's very, very easy, very simple. So you're saying to yourself, at zero seconds, uh, which is right here, right? At zero frames, uh, all the way to this 10 frames, you see how it's just very stagnant and very consistent? I'm gonna mess around with this. I'm gonna take this handle right here, move it like, let's just say, as you can see these little, these little, uh, how do you say, little boxes here. I'm gonna move it about two boxes to the left, uh, right, excuse me. And then on the right hand side here, <clears throat> this handle, I'm still working with this time frame still, right? I'm gonna move this about one box in or, or, or half a box in, okay? I'm gonna take this one over here and I'm gonna move it about a box in. And this on the right hand side, move this two boxes in, okay? So I'm gonna just uncheck this really quickly. So if you guys wanna actually end up going back in the video, maybe looking at how uh, the the access looked and then look at this right now, you'll see that they have more of a kind of quick to slow ratio to it because what these graphs are saying is, hey, from here to here, I want this to be very, very quick and then I want it to be really slow at the end, right? Very quick and then super slow at the end. That's basically what's happening. Um, if I just, you know, as you can see now. So that to me looks way, way better than a very stagnant look too because this one has a little more character to it. So I love how this looks. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and now do the second number two right here. So the rotation, zero keyframes, click on this. I'm gonna make this one just simply go from zero keyframes all the way to 20. And I'm just gonna make that just do one full rotation. So one full rotation. I'm gonna suggest you guys as well, highlight these keyframes, easy ease it and then give it some kind of fun little value. So I'll make this, hey, so let's say we'll go really quick and then super slow again, right? So if you see here, just like this. Now, honestly, I probably wanna go, that actually doesn't look bad. What I might do for the outside though here is make it go a different direction, like I did in the beginning of the video. Um, this one's going really quickly, this is going really slowly, so it's also really, really cool and really fun. Um, I also suggest you guys that you can probably also put some more strokes in and kind of have more fun in between these little areas here. But yeah, I like how this looks so far. This is really nice, right? And so this is since this uh, this this circle right here, this outer ring right here, is doing one full rotation. When you still get to zero seconds, it'll still be the same exact position. So that's exactly what I'm looking for, and making sure you guys stay consistent on that. So uh, just kind of pay attention to that when you're thinking about it. But this fourth one here, I'm not gonna mess with number three. Number three is already a, a solid line anyway. But this fourth one here, I'm gonna take this one, beginning of the actual uh, timeline, press R on a keyboard for the rotation, click on the actual uh, stopwatch, and I'm gonna say for this one here, I'm gonna make this one go just kind of one full rotation as well from zero to uh, 20 seconds. And I'm gonna make this one go negative though. So this is just gonna be negative one. That's gonna go negative one um, 
degrees, right? So that's going to basically say, hey, we want to go backwards one full rotation. So this is going to basically say, hey, we're not going uh, clockwise, which is this way. Or for you, you know, we're not going clockwise, we're going counterclockwise. So we're going to go the opposite way. So it's going to kind of look really cool and fun and um, kind of just give the viewer a, a different thing to look at. And it's kind of be sort of satisfying, right? So I'm just going to put this here, put this in here a little bit, and then look at this. Right, so this is gonna go. This is gonna go the right direction, or this is gonna go right. Excuse me. And this is gonna go left. All right. Oh, it looks so trippy, but it's so cool. It's also so rendering it. Just wait, kind of wait till it stops rendering, and you'll be able to see. All right, and then it starts over again. Super, super nice. I like it. I'm definitely a big fan, and I definitely suggest you guys you guys can try this out. Have a lot of fun with it. Also, when you render it out, by the way, uh, what is it? Control M or is it Composition uh, Add to Render Cube? Uh, to render this out, <clears throat> I believe I would just keep these settings the same. 30 frames per second is, by the way, what I'm working in. You guys can use 60 frames per second. Just let your render is going to be a little bit longer as well. And if you guys want it to be a little bit smoother, I'd probably suggest you guys use 30 frames per second. But if your stream isn't even 60 frames per second, I'm not entirely sure if it'll make a difference. But just putting that out there. Pressing OK. My output, I would most likely use format, uh, QuickTime personally. And if you guys want to, if you had a, uh, if you guys had a transparent background for whatever reason, maybe you have a transparent background, you just want only the rings to be so, uh, shown and not the background. I believe if you guys end up using QuickTime, you guys can actually change or not QuickTime. I think so. I think it's QuickTime. Yeah. If you just end up using format QuickTime and any of your channels, RGB is what you would want to select it on. By the way, if you're not going to do any sort of uh, background, if you want to just kind of render your background and everything. Just click OK and you're good to go once you have format quick time. But if you guys want to have your background, be, uh, like I said, transparent, maybe you want to have a different picture every time in the background, just use RGB plus alpha and then make sure you don't have your background selected. And then when you render it out, it'll also render out with no background. So that's pretty cool. Just so you guys know. And uh, yeah, so yeah, we're going to go RGB quick time, press OK. And then you save it to wherever you want to save it to and you press render and you're good to go. So with that being said, I am done with today's video. So it wasn't too hard, it wasn't too, it literally, you're gonna have so much fun with it because it's so damn easy and it's so easy to create different things that you're gonna be like, dude, this is probably the coolest tutorial ever. Um, nah, I'm just kidding. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Two likes on the video, you can see it down below, like I said at the beginning of the video. We'll have a little bit of fun with that kind of stuff if we do like a pack or a fun little pre-made kind of already done stream design, like, hey, we're starting soon kind of thing, right? So. Hope you guys enjoy. Yo, thank you guys so very much, by the way. We hit 93 subscribers on the day today. Um, 93,000 subscribers, excuse me. And uh, we're just getting closer and closer. A great 2019 to start to it. And I'm just working super hard. So we're just chilling. Um, yeah, talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. That's not hitting in 2019. Keep killing it. Keep Just keep pushing. You guys got it. I know for a fact that all of you guys had a, res a New Year's resolution. You guys have probably been killing it this entire week. I want you to make sure that you can, you see yourself, you can obviously do it. Just stay consistent, homies, and you just, you'll just notice how, how great things happen. Honestly, hope you guys enjoy. Later out, later out. Peace out. Much love. See you guys. Peace.